Cancer is a devastating disease that causes one in every four deaths in the United States. To treat cancer, bioengineers have imagined a variety of nanoparticles that can potentially deliver therapies directly to tumors. The challenge is to get these nanoparticles to all the cancer cells they need to treat in sufficient amounts and without causing side effects on healthy tissue. Nanoparticles are 1 to 1,000 nanometers in diameter. That's between 100 to 100,000 times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. They come in many sizes and shapes and can be charged or neutral. Their core can be made of a wide variety of materials which are energy receptive, biological, or synthetic. They can also be coated with specialized molecules that allow them to interact with their environment or loaded with therapies that are released in a controlled fashion. Tumors grow when cells accumulate several mutations that allow them to replicate uncontrollably. To feed this growth, tumors stimulate recruitment of vessels that are typically badly distributed and abnormally small, tortuous, and leaky. These leaky vessels pump liquid into the tumor, thereby increasing its pressure. As the tumor grows, proliferating cells start compressing the lymphatic system, which is supposed to pump liquid out of the tumor. Eventually, the lymphatic system collapses and the pressure builds until it is uniformly high, which means that there's no flow. Anything that needs to move through the tumor, whether it's oxygen, nutrients, or nanoparticles, must slowly diffuse. In addition, the extracellular matrix, which is the environment between the cells, is very dense and difficult to penetrate for larger nanoparticles, making diffusion even more challenging. Towards the edge of the tumor, however, where the lymphatics and vessels are restored, pressure decreases, leading to outwards flow from the tumor. This can make it difficult for nanoparticles that are in tissue surrounding the tumor to enter. One way for nanoparticles to reach the inside of the tumor is through the leaky vessels. This challenging tumor environment arises very early on in the development of cancer. Whereas normal vessels usually do not let nanoparticles escape, Tumor vessels have pores that are several hundred nanometers large. Nanoparticles are able to leak out of these vessels into the tumor, where they usually stay due to the high pressure environment. The passive accumulation of nanoparticles in tumor tissue is called the Enhanced Permeability and Retention Effect, or EPR. How well nanoparticles leak out of vessels depends on many factors. Making sure that nanoparticles stay in circulation as long as possible will increase their probability of escaping from the bloodstream. Nanoparticles that are smaller than 6 nanometers, for example, tend to quickly be filtered as waste by the kidney. Larger nanoparticles instead get eaten by cells of the immune system called phagocytes in the liver and spleen. Positively charged nanoparticles are even more susceptible to be taken up by phagocytes. To camouflage nanoparticles from the immune system and keep them in circulation, engineers often coat them with specialized molecules such as PEG that make them invisible. Furthermore, high blood flow and larger pores will increase the amount of nanoparticles that accumulate in tissue. Local tumor heating is one way to briefly increase both flow and pore size. Another solution is to avoid tumor tissue from building up pressure to high levels in the first place. Maintaining the pressure in vessels higher than pressure in the tumor tissue will help push nanoparticles out. One way to do this is to help vessels return to their normal state using anti-angiogenic drugs. Normalized vessels have smaller pores, which limits pressure buildup. Smaller pores, however, tend to block larger nanoparticles from exiting the vasculature, so there's a bit of a trade-off there. Rather than improving how well nanoparticles passively leak out of vessels and accumulate in tumors, researchers have also been designing special tumor-penetrating peptides that bind to receptors overexpressed in tumor vessels and tumor tissue. These peptides actively trigger a mechanism that opens up wormholes through vessel walls and tissue, which nanoparticles can then use to penetrate the tumor. After extravasation, the nanoparticles are free to diffuse throughout the tissue. Some of the particles, however, might return to the vessels from which they just arrived if the nanoparticle concentration in the vasculature drops. This is because nanoparticles tend to diffuse from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. For the remaining nanoparticles that have accumulated in the tissue, releasing a drug or heat can be sufficient to impact the tumor. There are situations, however, where it makes sense to deliver drugs specifically to cancer cells, thereby sparing surrounding healthy tissue. This can be done by decorating nanoparticles with targeting moieties that allow them to bind to receptors overexpressed on the surface of cancer cells or to elements in their environment. 
Not only does targeting improve the ability of nanoparticles to act only on cells for which they were designed, it can also potentially activate receptor uptake pathways leading to the delivery of nanoparticles directly to the inside of the cell, which is useful for cargo such as gene therapies. Targeting, however, poses several challenges since it affects where nanoparticles distribute within the tumor tissue. Understanding how nanoparticles distribute is critical to effectively treat all cells in the tumor. For example, particles that bind strongly and that are big and slow will tend to accumulate in the first cells they encounter after extravasation. Such accumulation is called a binding site barrier. Even without any specific targeting mechanism, positively or negatively charged nanoparticles can also stick to the extracellular matrix and internalize in cells, leading to similar low tissue penetration. This effect is exacerbated by the slow diffusion of large particles in the dense cellular matrix, made of collagen fibers and other molecules in certain tumors. Increasing penetration has been attempted by degrading the extracellular matrix to increase diffusion speed. As it turns out, particles that are fast or that don't bind very strongly to their environment will be able to penetrate deeper into the tissue. Overall, nanoparticle transport to tumors relies on improved circulation time, extravasation, accumulation, and tissue distribution.